Today I have a very small little webinar about one mistake I made, but I think it helps also other people. So don't feel bad that sometimes you do not always the correct thing with feet. Also, I absolutely don't know why every time I make a video late, lately, it's after a heat wave in the afternoon when it's been 108 and I've been outside with horses, hence the cooked look. But And it's October, we still have a heat wave. So anyway, today to talk about a little bit about world racing and impact abscess that happened to one of my horse and how you solve problem. So this is the horse in question. I, I inherited him in about almost 10 years ago. Um, and uh, he was a hunter jumper. He was supposed to go to a movie and the movie didn't happen. And the horse stayed with me. So it's been used quite, quite um, significantly as a hunter jumper. And then he tried to have a, a movie career, which didn't happen. And then I got the horse because he was boarded at my place and I keep horses. It was probably a little nutty. So you can see uh, how this horse moves. There's a video, I will give the link. I ride this horse every day since after I, I fixed him, it took him about six months but he needs, he, needs, um, he needs exercise. So I do ride a lot of horses. In general, six to eight to nine horses a day when I have time and I show horses. Uh, it's, you know, I do a lot of stuff. And he really likes to be in the first pasture, which is right next to the house. And then when he sees me coming or something bugs him, he goes up and down his paddock and he has broke, broke the, the gate a few times. Uh, we had to put really strong pillars on to hold all the gates together and he has a bad habit to do that and i just came around of probably two o'clock that's when we have to pull him out and he saw me coming i turned around i heard clank which was the, the door the gate and then i heard tonk and i didn't think about the tonk but i saw the horse running back trying to run back uphill and he was gimpy and i'm like oh no took the horse out he's walking on three legs the left hind is like holding up we're, we're panicking, you know, we check if there was a hole or he fell on, onto something. We put him in the, the medium arena and the first thing he did, he lay down and we're like, oh my God, he broke something. So we called the vet, couldn't find anything. I got x-rayed, you know, everything seemed okay. You know, he had a whole injury. So we're always worried about his neck and he has a little something in his um, hog. So all that got checked, you know, it was fine. Then all of a sudden, um, I saw uh, some pus coming out of the coronary band. And sure enough, he, the tonk I had heard was pretty much him, was him hitting, hitting the, 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 the pole, which is in metal. Okay, so we, we figured out that was an impact abscess and I wasn't too happy, but he wasn't totally lame on it. So life went on. So we, we kept, you know, treating the impact abscess. And um, that was three months after, after the, the injury. You can see there's quite a bit of uh, damage here. I mean, it's, it's already grown out, um, but, you know, it's still there. And then I decided, well, you know, it's better, so let, let's just dress the wall because, you know, and remember, it's, it's September, so the rainy season is going to start. There was not much thinking in my head at that time. I just didn't like to see this bump, so I thinned it. And, you know, after three months of the injury, we check everything, which we really did check him every two months or something to make sure nothing too bad happened. So, and, uh, you know, I, I basically thin, thin this area because I thought it was low enough, not a big deal. So I thought. <laughs> and then, um, you know, in December, because we're rechecking and we're like, oh, no, 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 there, there's, you can tell there's a track here, there's a track there. There was some, you know, some gunk coming out. That's, that's dirt. Um, <clears throat> and I'm like, well, this is not good. So, um, and you can tell, perfectly nice straight wall, very pretty. And I basically, the, the hoof was trying to heal itself and I kind of destabilized that wall. So I don't think that was a good idea. And you can see, you know, that's in September. I didn't like this bump. So I'm, I made it really nice and flat and I introduced uh, bacteria because it was not stabilized enough. And then by January, because we keep checking, I'm having a problem. It was not, it looks bad, but it wasn't as bad as when he banged himself. So there was a little bit, but, but basically I introduced uh, bacteria by, by opening up this area. So that was a lesson to not do that. 
all right? And then uh, this is in June, things are growing out. We're not touching anything. We're, we're not touching bumps. We're not doing any, I mean, I am not doing it, you know, learn my lesson. Um, and we don't have any, you know, this is, this is recently everything is healed. Um, and I did not put, I, normally I put both feet on, on, on blocks in the hind. I did not. So the horse is not caudally rotated. It's not standing right. But it was just for us to, to check the wall and make sure there was nothing in there. So that, that's, that's from actually when I thinned the wall and I introduced um, um, uh, bacteria in the wall. And uh, we treated it and, you know, we injected stuff in there. So it took care of itself. That's what's left. It's, it's totally superficial. But the message here, I will never do that again. And I think it's really easy, you know, when you think you're over a problem to just get a little bit, um, you know, too happy about your result and then you don't think it through. And you have to watch the weather. And I will go also a little bit about uh, moisture and what it does also to, to the keratin molecules. But so it's not over till the fat lady sings. You know, it's very important to remind that in, 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 in your head, watch the weather, watch, watch when you're doing things, you know, because probably if I had done that maybe midsummer or early summer, I probably would have not have that kind of problem. And we had a very wet winter, so yeah. So example of when I'm more careful, <laughs> you know, and that's the thing you have to learn also with a laminitic horse. A lot of people want to remove as much dorsal wall as they can, but when you have air pocket and stuff like that or did, you can introduce infection and um, this is in January and at that time I kind of thought a little bit through which I did not on the other case with my own horse um, and then basically when you have stuff like that trim a little bit more often and then reset the shoe back and then take more as we go and it's really important even if you don't have x-rays remind yourself is it the winter? I mean, is it the horse? Is the horse in a wet area? Is it not? So just be a little bit careful. May do do a little bit less more often. So this is the same hoof. I mean, it just kind of restored itself pretty fast. So and we were very careful. Okay. And I believe also in letting horses move after after laminitis if they can. We're not forcing it. Uh, it's under supervision. But I think uh, movement helps a lot the foot and they heal much faster and the shoe placement is very important. I don't believe the foot are symmetric, so I'll go into having more seminars on that. So this is another example. That's a, that's a, a client's horse also. And, you know, it would be very tempting to start thinning the wall to make it kind of straighter. As I say, you have to be careful. I made a mistake. People make mistakes. It's normal, all right? But the integrity of the wall should be taken in consideration. And, and it's better to be safe than sorry. I did not remove that all the way where, it, you know, basically it would look better, but I, I would not go further back to, to, to that blue line here, okay? And reason why, if you were to follow that, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you could actually go very close to the, the dermis. And that's not a good idea. I, I will go through the um, Palmer curve. It's my research, and you can see actually the concavity of the of the pedal bone. It's not it's not very good. So you can't just jack them up just because if the foot is already standing under the bony column. There's not much you can do, and especially on the a flattish pedal bone, you're going to actually put increased load where where it can't handle it. You know, it's better to take a big break over and let it be. Um, so this is the same thing, and you can tell how close you could go to the to the dermis. And if the foot is slightly sheared, you know, which happens sometimes with with horses, uh, you, it's a three dimensional object. You're going to have problem. And I will go into what shearing and loading across the sole is all about. But that's basically it. So everyone will make mistakes. It's normal. So the take home message is to actually watch your weather. Watch if the foot is, is, has distortion, then take it from there and do less more often. And I know sometimes your clients don't want to let you do that. They want to fix every, have you fix everything at once. Or, or if you're a veterinarian, you like to fix everything at once because you don't always get, get to see the horse again, you know. But I think you need to educate the clientele that it's better to do less more often.